Awesome. Okay. So if you guys can just let me know if you can see uh, the slides, I think this is going to be how we have to do it here. Um, I can't see the chat right now, so I'll check it um, afterwards. But if somebody can unmute and just let me know that you see it and we'll kind of jump in. I see it. Everybody okay. see it? I see right. it. Thanks. Okay. So hi, guys. Thanks so much for letting me share my story with you today and talk about how you can step into your purpose as a businesswoman. I'm really excited to be here. Um, this has absolutely been a journey for me. And I say that as someone who certainly hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> still on the journey, um, but I've learned so much through the process. So I'm going to share some things about that today. And, you know, one of the things I really didn't discover what I wanted to do until I was um, up around 29 years old. And even once I hit that and kind of really started understanding what it was I was meant to do. There have been so many failures and experiments to really discover what really, really works for me and my business and my clients. So I'm just going to share a short snippet of that journey with you. So a little bit about my story. Again, my name is Kyleen, and uh, I started out as a vocal performance, um, so opera major at school. I went for my undergrad, and I started going for my master's, but I got married around that time, and <laughs> I really had to decide what I wanted to do with my life. Opera is very difficult. It's very demanding. You have to travel, and it just wasn't where my heart was at. I really enjoyed it, but ultimately, I left school and had to really figure out what it was I wanted to do with my time and my life. And I always wanted to be someone uh, that, you know, felt like I was contributing. So I really did want to find a job that, um, you know, spoke to my heart and um, really made me feel lit up. And so I tried uh, quite a few things before settling on my current career. I designed shoes for a little while and that was fun. I was an online health coach doing at-home workouts for a little while, and then I turned into a personal trainer, and I worked at a gym one-on-one -on -one with clients for a little while, and those are already really fun. I really enjoyed it, um, but I really um, ultimately began to focus more on health and lifelong vitality over just focusing on the physical and visual aesthetics of health, so I began to really care more about long-term benefits um, than I did about having the perfect body. So I really started thinking about different things and ultimately I wanted to learn more about how my body worked so that I could help support my body and then help other people as well. And this was actually uh, mostly due to some really serious health problems that I began to experience that kind of shifted my mentality around that. So I don't have a lot of time to go into details, but I do share my story a lot on my website and on social media. So um, if you're curious about that, you can, you can connect with me there. But to summarize, it really started in 2015 when I had um, what I call my physical break. And that was really when I had two weeks of just total insomnia. It was basically a nonstop panic attack. Um, I had anxiety and intrusive thoughts throughout the day. I was crying all the time. I couldn't sleep. If I um, did sleep, I'd wake up. I'd start crying. It was just really a terrifying, scary, scary experience for me. And I didn't know what was happening in my body. So I really obviously wanted to figure out what the heck was happening. I went to the doctor multiple times during that, that um, break. And the second time she offered me an antidepressant and I took it um, home with me for an emergent situation, but I really wanted to see if I could figure out what was actually going on. So while I was in her office, I asked if I could maybe get my hormones tested. And she said if I was still cycling normally, she didn't really see a benefit to that at that time. So I really left her office really, really discouraged, but I had started kind of digging into the world of functional health and natural health, and I, I had started hearing little bits and pieces about different things that you could do to dial it in, and so I did pursue the testing on my own, and that's really when my health began to turn around and I got the support that I needed. So from there, I became an avid learner, and I wanted to know exactly how my body worked. I wanted to know how I could prevent this from ever happening again, and then, of course, how I could help other people. So I continued to dig deeper, and in 2017, I became an FDN, which stands for Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Practitioner, and that really just means I'm a functional health coach that works with women through uh, lab testing. Um, I continued my education because, like I said, I'm an avid learner. I just, like, can't stop learning. So I always uh, continue getting um, certifications, advanced courses, and different um, topics like blood chemistry and hormones and things like that. I'm going back to school next month as well for a graduate certificate in nutrition oncology. Um, and so I just love to continue learning about how the body works. 
Um, so throughout this process, I started to really build my business, work with clients, heal my body. Uh, and then I got diagnosed with Hodgkin's. And so that was a little bit of a shock and I had to process that and work through it. Ultimately, I chose to use conventional uh, chemotherapy alongside of an integrative approach. So I did things like vitamin C IVs and um, I hired an integrative oncologist that helped me with very targeted supplements to prevent um, toxicity, uh, organ toxicity and really save my body through the treatment. So that was really, really helpful in terms of getting through the treatment, but also, of course, through recovery. So I decided to write a book about that and start a platform to um, encourage people to look into integrative care when they do need treatment. And so that's my book, Healthy Through Hodgkins, and on social media, um, the platforms um, on Facebook and Instagram by the same name to really encourage women through that process. So becoming an FDN really helped me step into my purpose. Um, it allowed me to really uh, dig into this deeper side of myself where I help women heal. I get to do something I love every single day. And what I say is that I help women go from frustrated and exhausted to confident and full of energy through individualized functional lab testing, targeted protocols, lifestyle, and supplemental support. So it's really this concierge service where um, those who are just committed to up-leveling their health are looking for more information on how their body works and what they can do with their lifestyle to help support that. So from uh, this process of, of going uh, through building my own business and being an entrepreneur, I've learned three things that have really helped me be successful through the process. So number one, obviously, is focusing on my health. So I'm a I'm health coach, so I obviously need to practice what I preach, um, but it's really, really applicable to every person that wants to be mentally present, physically capable of achieving, you know, whatever goals you have, whether they be personal goals or professional goals. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. The second thing is finding uh, my purpose, and that really helps you in so many ways. It's good for your health, obviously, to be living into that, but it really helps you live full out, be excited for your work, feel like you're contributing to the world. And it took me quite a long time. I shared just a short little piece of that in the beginning, kind of trying a lot of different things before I came across this. Um, but now I really know that I'm living into my purpose um, doing what I do. And the third piece that's really helped me is investing in my business. This is definitely a process, but it has become a really invaluable tool for me to help me grow and help my business as well. So I'm going to share a little bit about how um, you can do that yourself. So as a functional health coach, my specialty, everyone's is a little bit different, but my niche is focusing on the gut. So people come to me with things like fatigue, fibromyalgia, brain fog, PMS, all of these different types of symptoms, but it doesn't really matter necessarily because as you look at this picture here, um, you can see how the gut impacts all these other systems of your body. So they're directly correlated in many, many ways. And healing the gut really becomes a crucial step to optimizing your health. And so when you are someone that is uh, you know, in business, it becomes a really crucial part of the process because if our body isn't functioning optimally, then we aren't either. So I've seen poor gut health impact relationships, parenting, self-confidence, the ability to function while or hold a job. I've had uh, women that have to call off work because they're in so much pain or they miss work. And obviously, you know, if you are trying to hold a job, maybe try to get a promotion, um, maybe you're trying to uh, get that raise, whatever it is, that makes it very difficult to, to do that. If you're an entrepreneur, your, uh, your ability to show up and be um, at the top of your game and mentally present and creative, you know, that's hindered by um, poor health. So, you know, there's always exceptions to the rule, of course, but a lot of people that make it to the tip top um, of the success ladder really are people that function physically very, very well and prioritize their health at a high, high level. And you'll see that with a lot of CEOs and a lot of people that, tr that travel for, for their jobs, they have to really prioritize, um, you know, what they eat, um, how much they're moving, you know, probably are taking some supplements, um, you know, they're really optimizing their sleep levels. And that sort of thing. So really, it's just uh, these that these people realize that in order to continue growing and maintaining the level of success that they've had, and really be able to handle the stressors that come with this growth and come with this success, they need to be in, in top physical health. So we have to really optimize 
this area, again, to have that physical, mental, and emotional capacity really to achieve whatever we want. And again, that's personal or professional. So let's quickly talk about just a couple things we can do right away. So a number one thing um, that's sort of at the foundation of any health pyramid is, is food. So focusing on real food, um, and this is something I really believe shouldn't be negotiable. There's a really easy question to ask when you're in doubt of if, if something's good for you or not. And that question is, did this food come from nature or did it come from a factory? So I really like to think of it this way. Your body is incredibly intelligent, and we really want to build our health with steel reinforced concrete blocks. And those are real fresh nutrient dense foods. You really want to avoid building your health with foam bricks, those things that we used to play with as kids that looked real but would fall over so easily. So your body is really, really smart and can, can build and create systems and fake it for a little while with those foam bricks. But when stress comes knocking and, uh, you know, we have these different stressors in our lives and those foam bricks fall and there's really no backup system at that point because what you've already been running on has been using those backup systems. So we want to save those for emergencies only and give our body the nutrition it needs so that we are functioning optimally. The second thing that you can do right away is start nourishing your gut by focusing on probiotic rich foods. So there's a list there of, of some suggestions like sauerkraut, yogurt, kimchi, and kombucha. And so one of the reasons that your gut affects so many aspects of your life is because of your microbiome. So these are the good and bacteria that live in your gut. They actually eat what you eat. So the good bacteria that help us eat healthy foods and the bad bacteria that cause problems for us eat bad foods like sugar. So they also poop, which is kind of fun to think about, but the good guys will um, poop metabolites that are really helpful for your body. And the bad guys poop things that are very inflammatory. So we know that um, inflammation is at the root of many, many diseases. And one way we can directly impact that is by fueling um, the, the beneficial bacteria. So eating things that are probiotic rich and then feeding those probiotics with prebiotics, which is typically fiber and vegetables, which helps them, uh, helps the probiotics proliferate and uh, maintain uh, the colonies in your gut. And finally, the third thing is pretty easy is to get outside, enjoy the sunshine. Many of you were talking about loving water. That's such a, a draw for people. And it's really just an amazing uh, health tool to walk barefoot, to be in the water, to be outside, to be getting sunshine, stressing less, getting amazing sleep. Um, you know, sun is really just helpful for so many things, your mood, your circadian rhythms, vitamin D production. And so prioritizing these things and uh, sleep, uh, especially uh, allows you to recover and really feel energized and focused the next day. So these are all little tools um, that you can begin to incorporate to take your health to that next level. And some of them seem kind of small, but they make dramatic impacts. So the second piece that um, I mentioned was finding your purpose. And I wanted to define that today as something that is a combination of things that you're good at, things that light you up, things that make you money, and things that help other people. So we really, uh, we're gonna dig into this a little bit in the breakout, so I won't go into this too much, but this may be something that you're already doing in your current job, maybe it's a corporate job, or something as an entrepreneur that you have created, or maybe you're using your current job right now to figure out what your purpose is. All of those are fine, but ultimately when you step into your purpose, it's really a combination of these things. And then the third piece that's really helped me quite a lot is investing in my business. So awesome, you've gotten healthy, you have the capacity, you have found your purpose, and now what? What do we do with it? So one of the ways that you can identify your, or, or invest in your business is start by identifying your strengths and weaknesses. So that really allows you then to invest in yourself or your business based on those weaknesses. So you want to target, you know, what you're really, really good at and spend a lot of time using that in your business. And then you want to develop whatever it is that you've identified as a weakness. Now, investing can really be financial, emotional, or physical, but don't shy away from financial investments because while they may, uh, you know, be really nerve wracking sometimes, that uh, pressure is sometimes what we need to hold our feet to the fire to get things done. So discomfort can sometimes be motivating. So I'll give you a really quick example. 
I did online courses, I've read books, I continued my education. I've been growing my business for years now. Ultimately, where I came was that I knew I needed uh, a one-on-one -on -one coach that really truly understood what I do for a living in order to grow my business to the next level. So recently I invested $16,000 that I did not have in my business bank account and it was the best decision I ever made. My income increased, my confidence built, my business structure got organized, and I learned repeatable processes. So again, growth can be really uncomfortable, and you better believe that when I invested that amount of money, I was committed to doing whatever my coach told me to do. That was really uncomfortable, but it pushed me to that next level, and it was really transformational. So I really believe that when it comes to investment, you must be patient enough to wait until it's the absolute right fit. Obviously, you're not going to invest in everything that comes down the road, but you got to be able to identify exactly what it is you need so that you know when that right fit comes. And then when that right fit comes, be brave enough to take the leap because it can be so incredibly transformational. So to just summarize really quickly, um, prioritizing your health, no excuses there, really is going to help you optimize your business life and your personal life. Discovering your purpose, um, whatever combines those, uh, those things of, of lighting you up, being something you're really, really good at, something that can make you money and something that helps other people. And then investing in your business so you can continue to grow and be the best and be on top of your game. So that is the three sections. Oh my gosh, it's right at like 15 or 16 minutes. I'm so proud of myself. Um, but let's jump into Angel. I don't know how you want to do this, but I was going to jump into how we can talk about this for the breakouts. Perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the homework for the breakout, I have three slides here. I don't know if you want to screenshot them. I did put a link in the comments if you want to pull the slides up to look at these later, but we're going to break it down. So she said we have about 20 minutes, 20 minutes or 10 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. So we got lots of time. So, um, here's what we want to do for the three steps. We want to start with how we can be healthier. So what I want you to do is identify three doable action steps that you can do to be healthier today. So some suggestions would be finding a bad habit that you can start working on eliminating, finding a good habit that you feel like is doable for you to add into your day. And then, you know, just an example, not necessarily, um, you can choose something else that you can do for action steps. But one thing I found really helpful, hiring a coach, you can get personalized recommendations and really take it to that next level. So whatever it is for you that you think is doable, that you think you can stick to, I want you to identify those three steps um, that you can start using today. For the second piece, I want you to identify your purpose, or some people might call it your zone of genius. So to do this, you can write down a list of every talent, hobby, skill you have, big and small, identify which ones really light you up, which ones really make you happy, you know, where you just lose track of time, which of those things can make you money because it's solving a problem or serving someone else. And so I gave some examples here because, you know, we can view this in very different ways, depending on if you are an entrepreneur Maybe you're a solopreneur, maybe you work for another company, but you're still an entrepreneur, or you can be in the corporate world. Maybe it's the job that you have and you can just start thinking through these skills. And then the third thing I want you to do is identify ways that you can invest in yourself for business. So again, identify your strengths and weaknesses because you really want to invest in the weaknesses and some really, there's a lot of different ways you can invest. It doesn't have to be, you know, a huge financial investment. But it can be books, podcasts, mentors, coaches, masterminds, conferences, courses. These can be live. Obviously, now they can be on Zoom. They can be online courses. Um, you can do audio books on your phone or podcasts in your car while you're doing your laundry. So just kind of think through what are some skills or some weaknesses that you have, either personally or professionally, that will help take your life